Which is the most dangerous site for intramuscular injection? Option A. Ventrogluteal. Option B. Deltoid. Option C. Rectus femoris. Option D. Dorsogluteal. The correct answer is D. 2. Before administering digoxin, you must check specifically for what? Option A. Breathing. Option B. Temperature. Option C. Heart rate. Option D. Level of consciousness. The correct answer is C. 3. The NMC code expects nurses to safeguarding the health and well-being of the public through the use of best available evidence in practice. Which of the following nursing actions will ensure this? Option A. Using isopropyl alcohol 70% to wipe skin prior to cannulation. Option B. Suggesting healthcare products or services that are still trialed. Option C. Ensure that the use of complementary or alternative therapies is safe and in the best interests of those in your care. Option D. All. The correct answer is C. 4. Registrants must only supply and administer medicinal products in accordance with one or more of TH. E following processes. Except, option A carer specific direction CSD. Option B patient medicines administration chart. Option C patient group direction. Option D medicines act exemption. The correct answer is A. 5. Mental Capacity Act 2005 explores which of the following concepts? Option A. Mental Capacity, Advanced Treatment Decisions, and the Acts Code of Practice. Option B. Mental Capacity, Independent Mental Capacity Advocates, and the Acts Code of Practice. Option C. Mental Capacity, Advanced Treatment Decisions, Independent Mental Capacity Advocates, and the Acts Code of Practice. Option D. Mental Capacity and the possible ethical and legal dilemmas in its interpretation. The correct answer is C. 6. One of your patients in a bay, one is having episodes of vomiting in the last two days now. The norovirus alert has been enforced. The other patients looked concerned that he may spread infection. What is your next action on this situation? Option A. Seek the infection control nurse's advice regarding isolation. Option B. Give the patient antiemetic to control the vomiting. Option C. Offer the patient a lot of drinks to rehydrate it. Option D. Tell the other patients that vomiting will not cause infection to others. The correct answer is a 7. As a nurse you are responsible for looking after patients' nutritional needs and to maintain good way during hospitalization. How would you achieve this? Option A. Providing all clients with liquid nutritional supplements. Option B. Assessing all patients using must screening tool and by taking patients' preferences into consideration. Option C. Checking daily weight and documenting. Option D. Assessing nutritional status, client preferences and needs, making individual food choices available, checking daily weight and documentation. The correct answer is B. 8. 
Barbara's friend Colin is inquiring about her condition over the phone. As her named nurse, you will keep confidentiality by Option A. Providing him with the information he needs. Option B. Asking him to speak to Barbara's relative for information. Option C. Gaining Barbara's consent to Provide him information. Option D. Asking Barbara to speak to him. The correct answer is C. 9. You are the sign-off mentor of Ben, a third-year nursing student. Your ward is his last clinical area placement. When caring for a patient with diarrhea who uses the commode, you will expect him to Option A. Use alcohol gel to clean his hands before and after care. Option B. Wash his hands with soap and water before and after care. Option C. Clean the commode with soap and water. Option D. Clean the commode with triclosan solution. The correct answer is B. 10. When delegating any task to anyone, what must you consider? Option A. Delegating according to job description. Option B. Delegating tasks to student nurses they can be able to do. Option C. Delegating tasks only to healthcare assistants. Option D. Before delegating tasks to anyone. Have to make sure that person is competent and able to carry the task. The correct answer is D.